One of the things that I think may put people off actually building a hex beam or any antenna for that fact is the tools that it's actually required. So what I actually did was I actually took I compiled a list of the tools that I used to actually build the hex beam and then I thought I'm going to condense that again and say what is the minimum tools that you actually need to build the hex beam. Um, the field portable hex beam that I've been building over the last uh, 15 months or so. Now, you don't actually need that much and I was really quite surprised when I actually seen this and I think most of us will have um, these tools and if not, I don't think you'll need to spend too much money um, to actually buy these. So there's so many of these tools that are actually used across the different sub-assemblies um, but I'm just going to go through it quickly and then we'll look at the kind of condensed list at the end but you don't actually need a lot. So the centre post, you know this is the, uh, the long thin thing, the long thin thing in the middle. You're going to get your aluminium, uh, uh, you know the bare aluminium whether it's 20 or 25 whatever diameter and length it is. You need to cut that to length if you've not already bought it to length. Well. Normally I use a like a miter saw uh, which cuts with a, <coughs> it's a carbide tip blade and it's nice, cuts a nice uh, neat cut. A hacksaw is actually all you need and it's going to cut it straight enough for what we're actually talking about here. 5mm um, allen key, well everyone's got an allen key set. 10mm spanner, now I know there is those little fairies or pixies that seem to take away and steal our 10mm 10 10 spanners but I'm sure we can find one of those. Now. Side cutters, wire strippers are a crimp tool. You actually get an all-in-one tool that does this, so you may actually have one of these. I actually got one, I got it in our, a cheap store, it was Lidl's or Aldi here. I use them singly because I like to use the ratchet crimp tool, um, but yeah, so again, you're probably going to have one of those. Um, a soldering iron, that's what I use for putting the crimp connectors on the end of the little coax uh, uh, jump, jumper cables that goes between the um, um, what, what do you want to call them where you connect all the elements and um, all the positions there's little coax jumpers so you want to be able to I like to solder those connections on there I use a butane solder and iron but again if you're a radio amateur chances are you have a solder and iron um, you need a three three millimeter drill for drilling holes around about the top um, and I've got down a cordless drill here I've got an old it's a cheap Hitachi that I bought from Screwfix when I when I first moved into the house about ten years ago. But most most of us have got a cordless drill or even just a mains one it would be absolutely fine. Again, we're going to see some repetitiveness there. So for the base plate or the hub, cordless drill, six millimeter drill, a pilot drill, a center punch. Now, the center punch I think is something that I wouldn't go without. Now we're using a paper template, so we print out the paper uh, and we cut it out, uh, glue it on to the aluminium. So having that centre punch and you get these ones that are actually spring loaded that you just press down and they indent the material, those are fantastic and that's going to give you a nice um, accurate positional size, positional sizes on your on your base plate. Um, 10mm spanner, 5mm allen key, a 3 or a 4 mil allen key for the, the clamp that goes in the middle and a pair of scissors for actually cutting out the uh, the drilling template. Onto the spread arms. Um, so again I've got a cordless drill because we want to drill the end to put our little um, keychain um, for, for, for hooking on, on the S hooks. A 4 millimeter drill we use for that. A heat gun or soldering iron, because I, I use a butane soldering iron, I take off the tip and I use that as a heat gun sometimes and the heat guns to put the heat shrink over the ferrules. Um, a marker pen which is good, so if you need to do some cutting and you want to mark the positions of your band markers that's great. Um, some electrical tape, some different colours of electrical tape if need be, and I do that to basically when I'm colouring up the um, different bands. Um, onto the wire sets again side cutters, crimp tool, it could be an all-in-one, um, a heat gun slash soldering iron, this is to put a little bit of heat shrink um, over the um, over the ferrule so you don't get jabbed by the stainless steel wire. Um, the rope sets, again side cutters or scissors, uh, a crimp tool, um, uh, a lighter or a soldering iron, that's just to burn the end of the rope to stop it um, um, freeing. 
and a marker just to get the right length you know all simple stuff you know and I've actually condensed this down and we're going to just run through this now and I think I'm, I've got to 19 items here which really isn't a lot you know minimum tools if you want to build the hex beam a hacksaw so a cordless drill slash mains drill or even a pillar drill you could probably do it on that 3 mil drill 4 mil drill 6 mil drill a center punch 10 millimeter spanner a 3, 4 and a 5 millimeter allen key a soldering iron side cutters wire stripper crimp tool so that could be the all in one um, pair of scissors um, a marker, permanent marker, the heat gun or the soldering torch just to, to shrink the heat shrink, um, the lighter, again you could use the, the solder torch, that's just for freeing the rope and a measuring tape. Guys, that is absolutely minimum tools you need to build this hex beam. So what is stopping you, you know, give it a go. Alright guys, hopefully if that's of some use and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.